We've got another French Provincial set on our hands. Hey guys, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. If you're new here, my name is Lauren and I am the Furniture Flipping Teacher. I recently resigned from my full-time job as a kindergarten teacher and now I am here to show you how I take old furniture and give it a new purpose and a new life. Today, I am so excited because I am going to be doing yet another French Provincial set. And thank you to Dixie Bell for sponsoring this video. I am excited another time because I'm gonna be using my Wagner sprayer for the first time with Dixie Bell paint. I've used it one other time, but I'm hoping that it will make this process go a lot faster than my other French Provincial set. If you didn't check that out, there is a link down below and also right up here so be sure to go check that out of course after you watch this video so let's get started we are going to go ahead and remove all of the hardware before we get started removing the hardware I want to talk about the numbers I found this set on Facebook marketplace for $100 I got it before I got the other set actually and I just came across it and that's what they had it listed as and so I was like we will be there so we went and picked it up and it was actually a fellow teacher as well so that was pretty cool to get to kind of talk about that together and then for pricing this is actually a custom piece so kind of the same along the lines of those two little nightstands that I did someone liked them but wanted more and luckily I had this in my inventory and so I am selling this set to her I'm not gonna make the mistake I did last time where I painted the wrong ones the wrong color that ended up working out okay but in reality this person wants the tall dresser and the two nightstands to be buttercream and the long dresser to be the midnight sky. So we're doing the same colors, but this one there truly is gonna be a little fun addition to each piece. So stay tuned, keep watching. Now let's remove the hardware. All right, so we wanna remove the hardware very first because underneath there generally is a lot of dust and oils. So when we're cleaning, we wanna be able to get all of that off. And then we'll also go ahead and clean up this hardware cause it's gonna end up being a nice, beautiful gold color. I'm gonna put all my hardware in one or two buckets. There's like 20 pieces of hardware on these pieces. So I wanna keep them all together so that it'll be easier to find them and keeping all the screws and things together like that because I've not done that before and then everything gets everywhere and I have no idea where it went. So keep it all together. Look at all that hardware. All right, now that the hardware is all off, it is time for cleaning and we're gonna be using Dixie Bell's White Lightning Cleaner for this step in the process of making these over. That is just gonna help us get all of the dirt, oil, grease, and grime off of the surfaces. I put my white lightning granules inside of a spray bottle because that just helps you save it and make it last longer. So that's an idea if you don't want to put it in a bucket, but I do have my two-sided bucket here still. One side will be for the dirty water as I clean it and then the other side will be as I rinse. So let's go ahead and spray it on. I'm just going to do one piece at a time because it's a bit breezy and so it'll dry really quick. And make sure to get in all the little crevices around this edge right here you see get all that cleaned Like we're always fighting the rain it's starting to sprinkle a little bit and it doesn't look like it's gonna clear up anytime soon so we're gonna go ahead and go underneath our canopy here in just a second and that way we can stay dry I 
am rinsing now. So when you clean, then it kind of leaves a residue as well. So you just want to go ahead and rinse that back with regular clean fresh water. So that's what I'm going to do. And then we'll get on to some sanding. the dirty water and then this is the rinse water see that even has a little bit of dust and color to it as well so that is why we clean Ugh. all right but our next step is to go ahead and give this a scuff sand I'm not gonna sand anything down to the bare wood I don't think so um, we'll kind of see once I get to it but it's time to sand Okay, for sanding, I am going to be using my surf prep sander and my vacuum, and then I'm of course gonna be using my dust mask. And this is really helpful, especially in the heat. It's just not so big and bulky, so I highly recommend if you guys need a mask, this is a great selection over on Amazon. Link's down below in the description. For sanding, I'm just gonna be doing a scuff sanding. So I am doing a scuff sand with a very fine grit, around a 320. And it's a little bit of a foam abrasive here so that it can kind of mesh well with the different curves of the French provincial style. And we're scuff sanding just to help that paint better adhere to the surface and to smooth out any imperfections. Also, real fast, I am not done with cleaning completely because in the inside, once I take those drawers out, I can already see that there's a bunch of dust in here underneath the drawers inside the dresser. So that will definitely need to be cleaned as well on top of the actual inside of the drawers. So I do it a little bit different where I like to keep them in, especially on the French provincial style to do the sanding, but we will continue cleaning a little bit later. Let's get to sanding. everything back all the dust that that created all that needs to go away because we're almost ready to start with the painting sand wiped back now before we paint we've got to prep a little bit more so I know that it is possible to leave the drawers in to paint but personally just because this is only my second time using the sprayer I don't want to do that just yet so I'm gonna be taking out all of the drawers again I will clean this in here too but I'm gonna be taking out all the drawers labeling them and wrapping them with my plastic and tape this is just to ensure that any of the bottom of the drawer the inside doesn't get any paint on it so I'm just gonna be labeling these but in the meantime while i start to label i'm also going to go ahead and 
do the plastic around the drawers. So there's this plastic that you can get that has the tape already on it, or you can do the brown paper with tape that you add, whatever works best for you. This I found just works best for me because that plastic just easily unrolls and then I'm able to still get that coverage. And this tape is super easy to just stick on to my drawer. So I'm just sticking it right underneath the little lip here so that I don't get any paint on these edges or the inside. And then this is also cool because it has its own cutter. It is very sharp, but then you just go ahead and cut that right off. I like to just do a little extra here to go ahead and make sure that this stays taped down. And then you can also tape the bottom up. One down, I think there's like 19 more to go. <laughs> the drawers wrapped but unfortunately I ran out of the plastic tape wrap so I had to do a little bit of a brown paper with the green tape no big deal but that did slow me down so that shows me that I really do like and it is way more efficient with the plastic with the tape already on it so I'm definitely gonna be picking some more of that up I am going to go ahead and clean the insides of the pieces because they are filthy and very dusty and I just want to get all that out of there before I even think about painting. You guys, I've told you over and over, prep, prep, prep. That is going to make your pieces more and more quality. So I'm just going to take the same white lightning cleaner and spray in there. And honestly, the insides of the dressers are going to be more dirty than the outsides were. So. Stay tuned for this dirty water reveal. You see the rags? Look at the water. Or I had to fill the other side with clean water and I still got that black too, just from the night sands. Ugh. So that's why you also clean the insides of your pieces. If you don't, you need to start. Finally, we are ready to start spraying and I am excited because I get to spray the boss as well because it's a water base and so it'll be still super easy to clean out the spray gun. I actually got some more spray gun nozzles to attach to my um, air compressor because I was like, well, I need to spray two different colors and so I'll definitely show you guys what I got and then how I'm gonna go about spraying these. All right, we're finally ready to paint here and I've actually got an Amazon package that came from my wish list. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it. I'm thinking I know what it is and I hope that it is what it is. So let's check and see. All right, so this is from Laura. She says, enjoy your gift and keep making the terrific videos. Let's see what Laura sent me. Oh, I was right. It is a respirator mask. So I'm going to be trying this out for my spray painting with the spray gun. So I just thought that getting one of these may be a little bit more beneficial when I'm using the actual spray gun. Um, so this one is one of the ones with the big kind of attachments right here. So we're gonna go ahead and set that up real quick. All right, so we're gonna be uh, putting some boss first. So the boss is Dixie Bell's primer. And I'm just gonna do this just because um, the buttercream is a lighter color and the furniture is pretty dark. So on those three pieces, the tall dresser, chest, the two nightstands, I'm gonna do boss, but on the other one, I'm not. But I just want that first coat to kind of cover the darkness. 
of the furniture as it is now. So I'm gonna take my filter here and then I'm gonna pour it in. And I mean, you can always pour it back into the container so I'm not worried about getting like too much or anything like that. But I always wanna filter it so that I don't get any chunks. With Boss, you don't want to water it down. So I'm not gonna be watering it down because then it takes away the qualities of it. So Boss will block stains, odors, and smells, and um, different things like that. And then it also stops the bleed through ha from happening. So I'm just gonna put enough in there as much as I think may it may take for the chest and the two nightstands and we'll let that strain through. And like I said, I got these two other detail nozzles on Amazon. So I can't remember how much each of them were, but I wanna say like $25 each, but this is gonna make it so much easier when you're using more than one color or more than one product. I'm gonna still clean out this nozzle, obviously, but it'll just be more quick in the long run to have both of those also available. And then before I attach this, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off this that got on the, around the rim. That way I avoid any possible sticking or just clumping, drying, all of that. I wanna keep this as nice as possible and as easy as possible to clean and things. So like I said, Boss is water-based, so that's why I'm really excited that I am able to use this um, in my spray gun without having to use like ammonia, things like that. If you were gonna use the Bin shellac-based primer, that would be very difficult to clean out. It's not impossible, but a little bit more difficult for sure. A lot of people have like a specific sprayer just for primer and I think that that might be what I'm gonna do. But we're ready, we've got it all locked and loaded. I am gonna grab a piece of cardboard just so that I can test it out. You know, always test out your spray because things could get moved around when you're not using it. So I don't wanna just start painting. So let me go get some cardboard and try it out. So when I'm spraying and when I'm wearing this mask, I'm not gonna be talking very much just because it's really hard to hear me. The sprayer's loud and then this mask is just really muffling for my voice. So I'll be sure to talk after I'm done spraying and I'll tell you like what I was doing and things like that. definitely gets hot under these masks, but I like it, it works. And the boss is on these three pieces, but I've gotta do the drawers next. So we're just gonna go ahead and move the drawers over onto the drop cloth so that we can also put some boss on there. The boss is complete, complete. And I love the coverage that it gave the dark finish on the before. And now that gives us a nice palette to do the buttercream. That's gonna be a nice, soft, light color. So I was glad to get that first coat of white on there. You guys, the sprayer seriously has cut down so much time. I know that there was a lot of prep work before, but like all in all, the hardware, the cleaning, the sanding, and even wrapping the drawers, that only all took me three hours, which was about the same amount of time that only the hardware 
and the sanding and the cleaning took me. So like that wrapping of the drawers really didn't take too much extra time, but this sprayer is really helping me cut down on the time of me actually painting. And that's just the first coat of Boss and it really only took me about 20 to 30 minutes. I, I don't even think, I think 20 minutes maybe. Um, so it goes by so fast when you use the sprayer. So, and not only that, but Boss dries super quick. It's ready to be painted. We're ready for some buttercream. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and strain my paint because I don't want any chunks in there clogging the straw. And then I didn't water down the Boss, but I probably will be watering down the buttercream just a bit. And we're gonna put, I'm gonna put about 10 ounces in there. And again, I can always just pour it right back into my container, but we'll start with that and then go from there. We're locked and loaded again. Ready for some buttercream. Okay, first coat is done on the buttercream and it is hot out here today. This mask doesn't help and then I put some glasses on too and that doesn't help, but I'm just a sweaty mess. I'm gonna let this all dry and I'm gonna go dry off and then we'll be back for coat number two. So I had ordered a little bit more buttercream because I knew that I had used some of this already. And since this is a pretty big project and I know that spraying takes up a little bit more paint, I knew I needed to order a little bit more. So I am glad I have this because I am out of this can. And like I said, I, I already had used some, so it's not like I used that entire can on these three pieces. It does take quite a bit of paint to cover all of this because it's a lot of furniture. So I'm just gonna strain the paint, refill, and get back to it. says I look like a mess. But good news is all of the buttercream is on, so it's just gonna dry for a while. And we've been flipping basically all day, minus a couple of deliveries and things like that, but we are gonna call it a night and we'll be back in the next couple of days to finish this set. We're gonna move on to the midnight sky for the long dresser and then we'll top coat everything. So. All that's gotta happen now is that's gotta dry so we can move everything back in the garage. We're back this morning for the long dresser. We're ready to put some midnight sky on here. Remember that's like a really deep, 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 deep dark blue, but it's basically black. And I have the leg, the back middle support leg. It kind of busted. It actually busted before we got it, but I'm just clamping it back together. Got some wood glue. So I'm hoping that once that dries, that'll be pretty sturdy. Even me just putting that 
uh, I've hammered these two pieces back up and it's already so much more sturdy than it was before. So that's just gonna dry for a little bit while I work on the drawers and then we'll be able to do the whole base of the dresser as well. I've got all of my buttercream pieces over here and they're dry, but I've covered them all because I don't wanna risk getting those black specks for my sprayer on. There's overspray and we've got our tent up here, but you know, you never know where it might end up. If you look at our feet, they're just completely covered with spray. So that is why I have all of those covered up. So be sure that you're prepping your space as well as your pieces. So let's get some midnight sky in the spray gun and start spraying. How much faster that was with my sprayer. I'm already done. Uh, I keep forgetting to look at the time, but I don't know. I think this took me like five minutes to paint, maybe. So I'm loving the sprayer, especially for these bigger projects. The black or the midnight sky has a lot better coverage than say the buttercream, but I will still have to go through with another coat. But in the meantime, we're gonna let that dry and we'll come back with coat number two in a few minutes. If you didn't believe that I was clumsy, hopefully you believe it now. I was filling up the paint can to attach to the gun because it ran out. And then right as I was going to grab it to put it back on the gun, it slipped out of my hands, dropped to the floor and flung up everywhere on me. So that was fun. We're mostly all cleaned up now, <laughs> ready for coat number two on the long dresser. So in here, I put the top coat along with the extra black paint that I had already used, the leftovers. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be spraying the top coat on, but I put a little bit of extra paint because I don't want it to be cloudy when I put it on. So if you add just a little bit of your color, especially if you're using a darker color, that'll help you to avoid cloudiness and streaks. So that's what I've got in my spray gun now. We're gonna mask up again and get that top coat going. All right, the black top coat is all done, so that's gonna dry, but we're gonna move it out so we can move the cream in to do the top coat on that one. And now all we've got left is for this to dry and then to reattach the hardware. But don't forget, there's that little addition that I'm going to be adding at the end. So stay tuned because that is coming up and it's gonna just make this piece, these three, these four pieces, geez, there's so many pieces. It's going to make these four pieces just so elegant, this little addition to the bottoms. And I can't wait to show you guys. Okay, 
Everything is dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and start putting the drawers in and adding the little accents. And then um, in a little bit, I will be adding on the hardware once it is all cleaned up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take these little wraps off. And if you remember, I did label these, so it's gonna be really easy for me to just go in and put them back where they belong. And then I actually am gonna be using some Big Mama's Butter in the Orange Grove scent to wax the drawer slides so that this just a little bit easier to slide in and out. Okay, so for my little accents, what I'm going to be using is Dixie Belle's Gold Gilding Wax. All right, and so I've also got a little artist brush here, and all I'm going to be doing is right down here on the legs, I'm just gonna be giving a little bit of color with some gold. So this is something that's really new to me. You guys know I've never really done much with gold gilding wax except on a little bit of hardware. And so adding this onto the top of some paint is gonna be just a little bit interesting for me and a little different for me. And this is what my client wanted, a little bit of gold accents to go along with the hardware. And she wants it down here on the legs. So we're not gonna do anything crazy. We're just kinda gonna go in between here. I think ultimately what I'm gonna have to do is come back with some buttercream and just kinda do some touch-ups about the parts that I kinda got over the edge on. Yeah, again, this is my first time doing this, so we're doing a learning curve for sure, but I think in the end it'll look really nice. I just gotta get it all touched up. But I'm gonna go on to the other leg. We got all the drawers in, so we're finally ready for the hardware, and the hardware is gonna match the gold accents that I did down on the legs. I tried to go ahead and clean the hardware um, with my hardware soup recipe from Jen over at Perfectly Imperfect, but I came to find out that these are not actually brass and they turned a bronze color when I was cleaning them. So it was good that I cleaned them up, but I ultimately ended up spray painting them with that gold metallic from the Krylon. Um, I did that off camera, but we're finally ready here to install them. And I am just so excited because this gold is really going to pop against this black, but also against the cream. So I'm just gonna carefully screw in all 20 pieces of hardware here. And they were all the same size this time, so I didn't really need to worry about, you know, which ones they go on and things like that. Here we are, all finished up. There were a few mishaps throughout the day, or this took me two days. I would say right around 12 to 15 hours total for all four pieces, which really isn't too bad. And I haven't told you guys the price that my customer is paying yet. So this was a custom piece, a custom set, and I charged her $950 for all four pieces because they are just so solid. French Provincial is really hard to come across nowadays, I feel like. Like, and so I knew that I could charge her a pretty good amount plus 
I keep going back to it, but those two original nightstands that I sold for 350, I just knew that I could get top dollar on this whole entire set. So after paying $100, for the set in the beginning and getting $950 for the whole set completed. I am at a total profit of $850 because thanks to Dixie Belt for sponsoring this video and this project, I didn't have to pay for any of the materials. Let's say I did have to pay for some materials. Each one of these 16 ounce containers of paint is around $20 and I did use a pretty good amount of paint. If I had just these two, um, it probably would have been around the $40 mark for the paint. And then, you know, I already had my sprayer, but top coat factored in. We'll go around $50 for materials. So even if I did do material cost, I would be at a total profit of $800. So that is, just an awesome profit, but I worked for it. I didn't just get that $850 in my pocket. I had work to do, and the things that make these pieces such quality is the amount of time and effort that you put into them. So just remember that when you are doing custom pieces, or even if you're doing pieces for yourself or pieces to sell on Facebook Marketplace, put as much time and effort in them as you need to in order to make them a quality project. Don't shortcut the details, you know, it stinks to have to go back and touch up, but just like what happened a minute ago, I didn't catch it on camera, but our canopies started blowing away and one of them rubbed up against this one and kind of chipped some of the paint away. I'm not just going to leave that there because no, that's not a finished product. I went back and I touched it up and then it continues to make this project look high end and quality like it really should be for my customer. And that is also how I am going to continue to get those word of mouth inquiries or people that reach out and they've seen my work because they have seen great quality work. Like you guys saw in a video last month when I did a four piece French Provincial, I did the brush on. And then this time I used my Wagner Flexio 4000. And you know, I don't know, all in all, I feel like it was maybe a little bit longer with the brush, but really in order to just get this awesome finish and to make sure everything is great, I don't know if the sprayer really made it go that much faster. I think that it helps the finish look just pristine and really flat without those brush stroke marks. But really all in all, my opinion is that it, because there are so many pieces and so much prep work for the sprayer, I don't know if it made it go faster or not. I feel like the last time I spent about 15 hours on my project for the four pieces. So, so take that with a grain of salt, but I'm not gonna put my sprayer away. I actually really enjoy using it. It's a really fun process for me. But again, I'm always gonna have that brush in my hand because I do truly love that method as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and maybe found something that you could take away Way. I hope I inspired you to get a little paint in your hair and have a little bit of fun. Don't get down on yourself. Don't get frustrated if things don't go your way. Keep at it. Keep at it. And patience. You know, when that paint splattered all over my face, I was not very happy. But I kept going and I finished out the project. Sometimes you just gotta laugh it off. So thanks for laughing with me. If you guys enjoyed what you saw today and you wanna continue following along on our journey of saving up for a down payment on a house, as well as helping other teachers with classroom expenses and student loan debt, please get subscribed down below. We would love to have you along for the ride. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the flip side.